Sony Computer Entertainment Europe presents a Universal Interactive Studios production. A game created and developed by Naughty Dog. Hello everybody, I am Super Mario Sonic Lover, and welcome back to Press the- stop. Well, I shouldn't have Begin. said cra welcome back, but... Anyway, so welcome to Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, or just Crash Bandicoot Warped. Um, but hey, there's a 3 on the clock uh, thing there, so hey. Anyway, so this is easily my favourite Crash game, and probably one of my favourite games of all time, so... Yeah, let's just get right into this. Uka, Uka is free. No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. Yeah, and finally, uh, after two games, no less, there's Ak Aku Aku actually has a character now. And now he has an evil twin. But you, Cortex, you have failed me twice! Great, Uka Uka, it was that infernal bandicoot! From deep inside my temple prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. But you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my patience! There is now no other power source left on this planet. I know, we've had a few unfortunate setbacks. And failed! But since your bumbling has managed to set me free, I am feeling generous. There is still a way for us to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, this time the great Uka Uka will make sure that you do it right! After many eons, my evil twin, Uka Uka, See those has little callbacks to Crash 1 and 2? You have Torna there and the uh, I locked jet ski. There to protect the world from his malice. Now, free once and again, the polar bear as he well. must be stopped. Children. Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time twisting machine. So to I guess Aku Aku just scattered the teleported us here. So why did we even have run out of the house? To recover the like, crystals before they do so. To where even are we? Portal, is this is a time twister machine like in space? Because there's like stars and like a the and like a good luck night kind of spacey background. So I guess I I don't know. It looks like we're in space or something. Because it was clearly daytime by the time we came out here. So, I don't know. Anyways, so, very similar setup to Crash 2 here. We have five different uh, warp rooms. Um, one secret warp room, which we'll get crash, to later. Crash, crash, crash. Um, we'll Why have to must get you always and gems muck again. in my mud? Oh, look, I have a mask helping me, too. We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. Indeed. Alright. Alright. So basically we have all the moves we had from Crash 2. Uh, we have the slide and the, the slide jump. We have the the belly flop. Which isn't very useful in World 1. Like, um, we can still technically break a crates with um, the still crates with it, but... Well, not still crates, but whatever the, those things are, but... Yeah, like, when we get... When we see those kinds of crates, we'll be getting a super body slam ability, so... You know... It... 
Body Slam isn't used, I'd say, as much as it is in Crash 2, but still. I mean, it's not used too much there either, so can't complain. But yeah, this is easily my favourite Crash game. Like, it has a lot of different set pieces, or, well, yeah, I'd say set pieces as well as, um, just different environments. Like, this completely craps on the amount of environments and, and level themes there were in the first two games. Like, I'd say even going as far as saying combined, because you have medieval themes, you have, like, prehistoric themes, you have future themes, you have Arabian themes, you have, um, um, was it the Great Wall of China? You have, like, um, World War One settings, you have, um, like a whole bunch of stuff, really, and it, it's just so, so great. Like, I love the amount of, um, variety there is in this game compared to the others, because if you ask me, um, when you, after replay, after playing Crash 2 a good amount of times now, the, uh, the themes are honestly, I'd say the, uh, least interesting in the series, because you have, just have a bunch of areas that have, like, snow in them, and you have s sewer levels and all that, which, it has a decent amount, amount of level themes, but, like, a good chunk of them kind of blend together and don't feel too different from one another. Whereas in this game, when there's a level theme that's basically like medieval but at night or in a thunderstorm or something, it feels different enough to make it feel like it's a unique level theme. Like, it's basically just a medieval theme with a different time of day or different weather going on, but... The, uh, just the uh, visual style just makes it feel like a unique level theme in a way. And I guess Crash, I guess Crash 1 kind of did that, um, somewhat. Like, not to the same extent, obviously, but it kind of, kind of did it, I guess. I don't know. Like, you had, um, we had a quite a few like ruins kind of levels in different settings like you had one indoors you had one outdoors and the road to nowhere stages had like secret areas that clearly resemble the ruin stages but yeah like you have so many different things to do in this game like um that's kind of a it's kind of a um a um mixed thing among fans like do you want like a pure platforming platforming based crash game um or do you do you like having like multiple styles of gameplay that crash 3 has and um yeah that's the that's the um thing about this game like there's not just crash platforming and there's not just the animal riding levels you'll have those but you'll ha also have stuff like the underwater scuba diving uh, you have a lot of levels of Coco, actually. She's basically the um, gimmick character, she get, I guess you could say. And she has a lot of interesting game, uh, gameplay uh, mechanics and whatnot. But for me, um, I actually kind of really like uh, these different styles of gameplay. Like, they aren't perfect. They aren't as fleshed out as regular Crash gameplay, for sure. But I think they do a decent enough job to for them to feel um, like they belong in the game. Like, they don't feel un unfinished or anything like that. Um, they aren't, again, they aren't perfect, and I think I just screwed myself over. Yeah. I need to kill myself. If I can't even do that, I'm gonna have to go way back. Okay. I never thought I'd have to do that in this level, but you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But as as like a Crash 2, you also have the bonus rounds are basically basically the exact same. Like you go through the level, you don't have to like get tokens or anything 
like like Crash 2. Um, well, I should say you don't like Crash 2. You don't have to get tokens like you did in Crash 1 to get to bonus rooms or anything like that. So that's all well and good. You don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. Now there aren't always going to be a bonus. There's not always going to be a bonus room in a level like underwater stages like this don't have bonus rooms. And um, a lot of Coco stages as well, I think. I don't think any Coco stage has a bonus bonus area. I could be wrong. I know there's a. L I know there are in Crash 4, but uh, we'll get to that. There's a re good reason for that, actually. All right. Yeah, you gotta be careful about these like little jet things, like. That fit, that always, that looks like a face to me. I always thought like this was kind of, some kind of weird looking frog thing. Like, I, it's clearly some sort of vehicle, but that face just makes it seem like a type of vehicle. All right, get the crystal. Now we go on the, on the gym. And this is the first game that actually shows your counter as you go through the level, through the level, like Crash One, didn't have one at all, I think. Crash Two had it at the end of the level, but you could see how many crystals you had, oh, crystals, boxes you had. Um, this one shows your counter, like you, how many you've, you've broken, how many there are in, are in the stage as well. So that's all good. You can't forget about that good old Crash Dance. Also, so you see that little blue. Um, relic kind of thing there. Those are time trial relics. So basically, there's Sapphire, which is the like the first um, like method of getting it, like the easy easy run, I guess. There's then there's gold, which is basically hard, and then platinum, which is ridiculous, ridiculous sometimes. I can get a good chunk of them, but yeah, you aren't going to see me get going for a full platinum run. Crash, Coco, if you have already retrieved a level's crystal, then you will find a floating clock when you enter for the second time. This floating clock activates time trial mode. Grab it and the clock will start ticking. Race for the end to get the best time. But beware, some elements will change. Yeah. So basically, this is the um, a new... A brand new mechanic in this game, the time trials, which, um, as Zakuraku said, you get the clock, and the level design will mostly stay the same, but there are a few things that will be different. Like, you'll see, like, stuff like these little box, these time boxes now. So basically, depending on what the number is on the, on the box there, the time will stop the basically stop for a few seconds so basically just get to the end as fast as you can obviously and I won't be doing a lot of the um, a lot of these until like post game because then you'll get like a running ability that will make these a lot easier to go through but those are mainly for like well those are for the Crash platforming sections. However, these um, underwater levels don't like. It doesn't matter if you have the uh, abilities or not. So I'm gonna, with all those stages that aren't like actual platforming stages, I'm gonna go do those right away just to get them get those over with. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna aim to get like all golds. Like, I'm not going to bother with Platinum so again, but I, there is a special reward for getting all the... Oh, I thought I was dead, actually. Um, there is a special reward for getting all the um, all the golds. And I didn't think I got that. Honestly, I felt, felt like I screwed up a good, good chunk. But seems like we got a good enough time for that. But yeah... I think it's a decent a addition to the game. Decent amount of replay value. 
Um, no, I'll skip that. <laughs> you technically don't have to, well actually you do need to do uh, a decent chunk of them because um, you have to get to the secret warp room in order to get the rest of the gems you want the true ending. So you technically have to have to do the time trials which for some might be a bit of a, a um, pain depending on what kind of player you are but I don't know, I don't, I've never really mi minded them. I thought they were a pretty neat addition. And, yeah. And now we have Coco gameplay, which, again, she's kind of the, basically the gimmick character. She gets to ride on Pure the Tiger, I believe is her name. It's a, I don't know if the Tiger's a, a he or a she. I've always assumed it's a, it's a she, to be honest. Wrong. I, I've heard from some people that I say he, but yeah, she's de this is definitely my favorite versions of the uh, ri animal riding levels because like it doesn't suffer from the slipperiness of Crash 2 and fail. It doesn't su suffer from that stuff from Crash 2 and it doesn't suffer from being like the first game and not being completely, like, fully realised yet in Crash 1, because I like those stages far, fine enough, but they aren't polished quite as, quite enough. But Crash 3, I think, has the, the, the uh, most fleshed out level design out of these. And, um, they're just the most fun to go through. And yeah, this is easily... The, this uh, soundtrack is definitely my favourite in the series. Like, Crush... Crush 1 and... Two, oh, come on. I guess it's the LP curse. Because I'm not usually this rusty at this. Excuse me. But yeah. Adorable. But yeah, we already did three levels and all of those were different themes, so. I think every level in World 1 is a unique theme, actually. Alright, we're gonna go back and get the, the relic. Let's see, how I, let's, let's see how I do with this. Hey there. Uga Uga and Cortex want tiny get crystals and bring them to big Colosseum in Rome. Crash! Leave them for tiny or crash get crushed! Yep. We're gonna fight tiny again. Cause. Oh. Well, it's funny cause tiny in the Crash 2 was like the third boss and he's the first boss here. Yeah, I kind of want to say that he's harder to deal with in this game. Not uh, him specifically, like if it was just Tiny, it would be a crap ton easier, but um, there's something else we have to deal with which makes it a lot harder unless you know a certain trick. But yeah, um, we'll, get to the, we'll get to them as we go through, but the bosses are a thousand times better in this game than they are in Crash 2, and Crash 1 for that matter. Um, like every boss in this game is blood pumping and keeps you entertained throughout and there's not a lot of like well you kind of have to wait until they're open but when you are you're dodging things and it feels like an obstacle course and if you, you, you still feel like you're engaged into the fight it's not like Komodo Bros or whatever where you kind of just stand there for ages waiting for them to be open but yeah Decent run, if I do say so myself. But yeah, there's also a fourth um, time trial like um, record you can beat, 
which is the developer times. And they're absolutely ridiculous. I, I will never bother my, uh, bother, bother trying to get those, because Platinums are hard enough as it is, and yeah, I, I don't have that kind of patience or free time. Well, I kind of do have that free time, but I have, I can, I have, uh, I can spend my time doing more practical things, like, uh, playing games that are in my backlog, actually, um, recording LBs and stuff, editing, and all that stuff, so, you know, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, you can still do that slide spin trick, like Crash 2, I guess it's because it's, um, I'm playing this on the, uh, the, um, original, oh, that was sick, um, I'm playing this off of an original uh, PS1 copy on the PS3, but I feel like it's easier to do that spin trick on the on Crash 2, because it might be because I have the uh, PSN version of Crash 2, but uh, I don't know, I could be wrong, but yeah. Also, another little, a small little detail that, I, that really helps out is that, um, the Wumper Crates actually gives you two at a time instead of one now, which you wouldn't really think it would be that much, but man, it makes things so much quicker and a lot more, like, I, I don't know, I, I guess fast paced, like, it keeps the flow going. Like, you don't have to worry too much about, like, oh, we're going to have to wait a few seconds until we can get all these Wumper through. But no, you can just you can just do it five times so you're good. And this is easily my favorite theme in the in, in the entire series. Like the warproof theme is just it's just so, it's so good. It fit. It's basically Crash's theme. Like they reused it in Crash 4. They it, it's not in the game, but you can find online there's a Crash 3 Warproom remix of, uh, for Mind Over Mewen, which is kind of interesting. Like, it's easily my least favourite version of the theme, but I do like that they actually included that, even if it's not in the actual game, as far as I know, anyway. Shameless plug, I just streamed the Titans games on my Twitch, and you can look at, you can watch those on my channel, wave. Um, uploaded the archives and they're all on there. Uh, maybe I'll stream, uh, I'll LP those for real at some point, but not for a long time. I mean, we have for what for stars we have the Insane Trilogy coming out in just a, just two months and just under two weeks. So at the time of this recording, like it could be out by the time this comes out. But, with that said, I do plan on doing a blind live stream of it when it does come out. Because, you know, I, I, I'll probably do actual LPs of it, even though it's Crash 1, 2, and 3 again. But, you know, <laughs> you gotta do those remakes. But yeah, I'm gonna, when they come out, the day it comes out, unless I'm like, s something happens, um, I, I get sick or like... I get taken, like, kidnapped by pirates or some crap. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be doing it streaming that day one. Because I am unbelievably hyped for that game. And it looks better every, whenever I see more of it. Like, it just looks so, so incredible. And I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see what Crash 3 is looking like. Because, man, Crash 1 and 2 look glorious so far. And... They're fixing, from what I've seen, like, Crush 1, they fixed my main issues already. Like, the box, the, um, the fact that you can't die to get gems and all that, I believe that's fixed, because they seem, they've said they're going to include, like, a, a universal save system between all three games or something, so the box count will always be saved after a checkpoint. So that's all good. And for bonus rounds, even though the the bonuses count to the box count, 
um, in the stage, you actually can replay those. Like, you can just go out, you fail, just go to the warp pad, and you'll go right back in. So, yeah, they've already, they've already fixed my major, oh yeah, and the saving. That's fixed as well, so that's, that's all good. So, yeah, they fixed my main issues of Crash 1, and, well, we'll see about how the controls feel, but from what I've heard and seen, the controls don't look too different, or well, they, with minus, like, slide jumping and all that, it basically looks as, um, more or less, more or less the same as the Crash 2 footage, control-wise. I guess I'll see for sure when I play it, but that's actually really, really reassuring. Because going back to Crash 1, controls and all that other, like, archa archaic kind of stuff. Like the saving, and the boxes, and the box gems and all that. They seem to be fixing all that. So, I'm, yeah, I'm very hyped, hyped about it. And, yeah. Crash! Cock off! Store the pretty crystals! Tiny take them back in Gladiator Arena! Alright, there's a way you can cheese this fight, but I'm... Just for the sake of the LP, I'm gonna fight him legit, because I don't want to feel like a cheap, like, plank. Look at those 2D... 2D people. Or 2D sprites, I guess you could say. But yeah, this first... Like, when you when Tiny's on the, on the arena, basically... You just walk around. He's more or less acting as he, as he did in Crash 2. Except for the fact that he has a pitchfork now and you don't have platforms. Um, but this part is actually pretty difficult if you're not careful. Because you have all these lines that come out. And it's actually harder than you'd think to avoid them. Like for a first boss, this is actually pretty decently tough. So, hopefully I can do this. Crap! Dang. Yeah, I had Aku with me. Aku, Aku, well, not Aku from Samurai Jack, but... <laughs> um... Yeah, no, I don't have Aku, Aku with me, so this might be bad. Oh my gosh! the first boss and this is already much more interesting and exciting oh my gosh okay and oh I thought it was done <laughs> yeah so now we have the super belly flop Basically, what you, what it sounds like, and you'll just get basically um, the animation's slightly different, and you'll get a shockwave. Well done, children! By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel <clears throat> area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. Yep. Yep,